know, talking about trauma or phobia or any problems related to psychology, there is a new breakthrough called virtual reality, which may be able to help us with psychotherapy. So, to talk more about this this morning, joining us is Aulia Iskandarsha, who is the developer of VR technology for psychotherapy. Good morning, Ms. Aulia. Good morning. Thank you for Good morning. Yeah. Sanas. Hi. Yes, Hi. <laughs> okay, now um, uh, I want to know, uh, Mas Aulia, can you please tell us um, how did you discover and also invented this VR technology for psychotherapy? Yeah, actually we are a psychologist classically trained for kind of treating phobia or trauma or fear okay. in the classic uh, ways of psychotherapy. Okay. But then the technology advancement today make it possible to integrate the technology and also the classical uh, training of this intervention. Oh. So the idea is come up from uh, the trauma, mm -hmm. but it's not really trauma, but it's kind of phobia, mm -hmm. phobia or something. So the idea initiated in 2018, okay. when people asking to uh, ask kind of, can you treat our fear of darkness? Oh, okay. okay. But are you really not comfortable to come to the psychologist's room and then uh, yeah we kind of presenting some things that really really dark so maybe I really terrified with that thing mm -hmm. oh, okay. therefore I and my colleagues who from the uh, faculty of mathematics and natural sciences mm -hmm. from this is uh, technology information the information department mm -hmm. kind of brainstorm and then we got kind of okay we have this kind of virtual reality technology to presenting something's object or situation in virtual life. Okay. So then I said, okay, can we produce this kind of things? Okay. And then so the research began. Oh. Okay. So let, let's, before we get into the, how the uh, intricacies of this uh, VR technology works mm -hmm. with psychotherapy, how would you normally, what is the idea behind treating somebody who has a phobia or perhaps a trauma? For example, if I'm scared of the dark, yes. would it be, the approach would be to put me in a situation where I'm facing my fear, so to speak, and then slowly get over it? Is that is that the uh, the thinking from before yeah. this technology yeah. was even invented? That's true. So uh, basically, mm -hmm. this exposure therapy mm -hmm. consists of two approaches. Okay. The first approach is flooding. Mm -hmm. The second approach is systematic desensitization. Okay. So flooding, it means that you are kind of presenting something that really flooded your mind with your fear. Oh, wow. For example, okay. when Paul like said, <laughs> for example, <laughs> when, when, when Paul kind of, okay, you are of uh, fear of uh, darkness, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you suddenly invite that into a room that really dark, wow. that you cannot escape. It's called flooding. Okay. That's the first approach. Okay. The second approach, it's systematic desensitization, that you systematically or gradually introduce or expose into your fear. For example, is this kind of darkness level scared you no okay i will treat you oh, this kind gradually. of relax relaxation training so we kind of uh, 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 learned them about this relaxation training when you calm down then we kind of decrease the level mm. of uh, the light into more dark more dark more dark, more dark and then dark. suddenly you meet this kind of level so there's two different approaches here. I yes. would say they're vastly different. Yeah. I would prefer the second. <laughs> Me too. But is there, is there a reason why there's two? Is one more effective than the other depending on who you're treating? How yeah, yeah, that? that's true. Okay. Because it depends on the personal. I see. Oh. When you see as a psychologist, you should kind of understand who is the client. Mm. When I kind of assessing you, Paul, I think you cannot handle this kind of No, if you flood me, I've never yeah, come yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Me too. So, Me too. <laughs> so I would like to favor to use the second method, the okay. systematic desensitization. I see. Okay, okay so let's so let's then move, talk about this technology and how it yeah. relates to that. Yeah. It, so now you're ha able to have this technology to put me in a dark room without physically putting me in a dark room, correct? That's right. That's okay, right. so okay. how effective is this then? Because obviously, for example, if I'm your patient, I would know that it, I'm just... This example, is not the reality. Yeah, for example, I have a yeah. set of goggles on or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe in my mind I know I'm not yeah. physically in a dark room, as opposed to in the past I would yeah. actually have to be in a dark yeah. room and I might actually, it might be more triggering. Yeah. So how is the effectiveness yeah. of this? So, interestingly, mm -hmm. according to the research, the core element of virtual reality is not a virtual, but the reality. Sometimes people fear of darkness, mm -hmm. not really presented in the real life condition, but it's kind of dark room 
but it induces the same emotion. It does, oh, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's how our brain works. That's right? true. Say, mm -hmm. when you kind of phobia to any kind of dogs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're facing this dog in front of you, yes. you feel. But when you, you presented this kind of thing in a form of picture or in the form of a movie, mm. the emotion still elicits in some way. That's true, uh, that's true. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. If I, I, guess I, I don't like spiders in particular, so if I or see cockroaches, yeah. or cockroaches yeah. if I, even if I see it in a movie, I'm a little, yeah, uh, me too. A little creeped out, but yeah. less. Yeah. Not as much if I actually physically saw yeah. it in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. So this virtual reality come mm -hmm. up into the idea, we should introduce this reality into virtual world because okay. it's kind of arising the similar emotion the similar to the emotions. clients. Okay. Okay. So therefore, according to the research, say that there was similar evidence oh. that this virtual stimuli or virtual situation has kind of similar a uh, real life condition. I see. It's the same fear, basically. I would say I would be more fear. willing to try <laughs> treatment for any of my phobias because dealing with a phobia is difficult. Yeah. You have to face your fear. Yeah. Who wants to face difficult. their fear? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But knowing that it's virtual reality for me, I would it would be a little bit more easier for me yeah. to try. But it I don't. I but right. I don't want any kuntilanak in my VR. <laughs> yeah. no. is, that, is that your no, phobia? That's my phobia. No, I don't want to see any ghosts. But um, Mas Olia, we yeah. have this um, uh, footage of how the VR actually work. This uh, treatment works. Maybe you can walk us through. Yes. Okay. We're going to. Nah. Yeah. Hey, what's uh, happening here, yeah, actually, uh, this is uh, the third uh, project. It's uh, kind of a virtual reality exposure therapy. Okay. Yeah, to decrease the anxiety. Oh. It is presentation anxiety. Yeah, oh, this person so has problems speaking in front of the public. Of so it. we kind of uh, making the situation. It's for high school students who kind of uh, less perform because they kind of fear of presentation in mm -hmm. front of. Uh, their colleagues. So first, this is our laboratory settings. Okay. So uh, they introduce into level one, level two, level three, and level four. Ah. So level one, they kind of ask to read a script in front of only a small group of people. Okay. Small then when people. it's did very well, so we increase into level two. Okay. So the amount of people getting bigger. Uh, oh. Like a classroom set, That's for example. That's the next And then one. the fourth level is kind of in the uh, plenary or ah. in the uh, kind of seminars that wow. uh, consist of a lot of people. Okay, and then wow. like the fifth level would be like O2 Stadium in the UK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stand-up comedy. And you're Bono. <laughs> so, well, I'm curious to know what are, because this is very interesting, now that we're very actually seeing it, we're seeing on the big picture is mm. the actual, what the, is actually happening, the student has a set of goggles on yeah. and the, oh. the controllers. Meanwhile, in that in that little yeah, insert, kind of, you're seeing what she's seeing. In, into the classroom. So, so she has to do the whole process of walking yeah. in front of yeah. everyone. Yeah. Oh. Just but not like walking physically. Right. They're using Use the this oh. uh, technology. Yeah. So cool. And the students aren't real, by the way. They're virtual students. <laughs> I can see a little bit, but they yeah. look quite real. So um, this is would be this would be a common one, I assume, because not a lot of people don't feel comfortable yeah. with, uh, speaking in front of the public. What are some of the more common ones that this technology can be useful? Because I can see for a classroom setting, it could be very useful because you have the walking in part, you have yeah. the standing in front of students. Yeah. Um, what other uh, common uh, fears or phobias do people use this? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, fear of darkness. Darkness would be fear good. of specific uh, animals, okay. like okay. cats or dogs. A dog, okay. and then uh, fear a kind of pre uh, presentation anxiety. We call it right. Presentation anxiety, or uh, second is uh, social anxiety. Oh, really? Yeah. Social anxiety. Such as? Yeah, yeah, making friends. Just like yeah. one on one. You have to introduce yourself. Really? Someone kind of very hesitate, very shy yeah, when very you introduce shy. themselves. So we kind of making the situation when the new uh, friends coming. Mm -hmm. So you should introduce yourself. Oh my goodness! Oh. Yeah. So it's it's already done in uh, master thesis of my students. Wow, okay. that's very very. Do you have one for heights? <laughs> Asking for a friend? Uh, not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Because I, 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 I'll tell you why. I, but, uh, but it's a common fear, right? It is a common yeah. fear. I went to visit uh, Camp Nou Stadium. Yes. And one of the things Barcelona. they offered, yes, they offered the the virtual reality goggles. They said uh, you'll feel like you're actually at the game. 
but it was at the top level. Yeah. So I'm like, how real can it be? I put it on. Honestly, I was a little bit scared. <laughs> you know, I know. Because there was suddenly there was a large crowd, and and when you move, it actually moves, so it feels very real, even though I knew in my mind that it wasn't yeah. real. So again, the psychological effect it can have on you from what you're seeing, that's right. it does feel real, even though if yeah. it isn't. I don't know if I can, if I'm explaining yeah. it properly. Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. The same fear, right? Yeah. You have the same fear. Now, yeah. um, I also want to know the, about the future development of this technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, this technology can be uh, converted into several uh, psychological problems. Mm -hmm. Now we are kind of uh, still improving in the uh, research group mm -hmm. to treat the cognitive training for those who uh, experience uh, dementia. Oh. Oh. Because people with dementia, uh, light dementia, they kind of, uh, yeah, all the short term and also long term memory kind of losing mm -hmm. uh, gradually. Yeah. So we use this virtual reality mm -hmm. like uh, this situation that they kind of can learn the cognitive work. Oh. How does it work? How, how would it be? For example, uh, we are introducing how to cook nasi goreng. Okay. Oh. So in front of you, a lot of ingredients and also kind of uh, this uh, cooking stuff. Okay. So you should choose with kind of ingredient you should choose for nasi goreng. Hmm. You separate it and then you try to cook. Okay, it's like a memory game. That's right. Yeah. So it's more like a training, you're training the mind. Yeah. Wow. So that's, now we are def still developing it. Okay. Yeah, so uh, up till now the process is still in uh, tryout. So we use uh, real, uh, not real, but it's laboratory participants. Mm -hmm. Those who kind of, okay, I'm now kind of uh, losing my memory, maybe due to my uh, dementia uh, diagnosis, early stage of dementia. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we kind of, okay, we try this. Wow, very interesting. So I'm curious, uh, Masaulia, how has it been so far? It's been a, it's been a couple of years already. Um, what has it been like results-wise? Yeah. Also, from the patient's perspective, how has it been for them? For example, somebody who had previous treatment without this technology compared to now having this technology. Yeah, actually, uh, according to our research, uh, uh, research uh, result, so mm -hmm. in the laboratory setting, those who use this VR technology feel reduced anxiety toward uh, the uh, darkness situation. Wow. So it's increased their anxiety mm -hmm. and they feel more having their self-efficacy mm -hmm. to uh, uh, yeah, facing uh, their, their, facing their, their fear. anxiety or their fear. Mm -hmm. However, the next step should be use kind of methodology to check the efficacy and also the effectiveness of this virtual reality intervention into real patients into mm. real client because we have to make kind of this translational research mm. yeah because now it's in laboratory setting that yeah. you said but right. in real life condition yeah because first we should have this kind of standardized model yeah because psychologist is not replaced by this kind of things mm -hmm. but these things the vr things is kind of methodology yeah. that can enhance the effectiveness of the psych psychotherapy by yeah. The psychotherapist. Right. Because you're still applying the same theories, yeah. it's just using that's this true. as a more that's effective true. tool. But when you have a client, like you said, a Paul said that kind, okay, I'm fear of hate. Maybe when I have a resource, I can get you into some things like a forklift or something that can be upscale uh, the high level. Mm -hmm. But then it costs a lot of things. Yeah. That's true. But in virtual, you should experience mm -hmm. some things with the leveling or mm -hmm. systematic desensitization, mm -hmm. say, Paul, I will take you into one meters up to the floor. Yeah. Are you still okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm okay. And so you can experience that uh, the, uh, the floor of the levels can into the one meter. Yeah. I'm just thinking about all these different applications you can use. And so yeah. far, I've thought of a few, like, uh, for example, I'm, I'm scared of clowns. I'm starting to realize I have a lot of fears. <laughs> Is it because of it? I don't know, no, no. Did I've you only, saw it? I just I never liked clowns ever yeah. since I was little. Just something about covering clowns, the face. I hate yeah. Clowns. And I'm I'm just thinking, you know what, there could be simulations for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps we had a kid's birthday party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get frightened at kids' birthday parties. Anyway. So yeah. very interesting. I I mean this is such a I guess I would say it's a very much a breakthrough because yeah. I would yeah. say, again, applying it to myself, and I think that plays a part into it. Initially I thought well, how effective can it be when you know it's not real? 
But now I'm thinking, well, knowing it's not real actually helps with the treatment, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you know that you, what you're trying to do is make these triggers less of an impact Scary, on you. Yeah, yeah, as yeah you, because so you're getting used like to in it. trauma, the situation is not a recurrence, but the emotion embedded into the situation right. recurrence in yourself. For yeah. example, those who are having kind of traumatic True. experience like a car crash, yes. then it feel okay, this near uh, my uh, end of life experience. experience. Yeah. But then, when kind of this kind of car, white car, for example, coming and then kind of inducing the similar emotion that it attached into this situation. Hmm. So that's why people who are having traumatic experience cannot get out hmm. of yeah. their experience because not experience itself but the emotion embedded into the experience that cannot very much yeah. so it's a lot of people uh, fail to move on mm. yeah it made me reflect on my fears though yeah and a lot of near-death experience no no one near-death experience yeah. but <laughs> well i mean and that's the thing i guess uh it's it's great technology however we also need to recognize if we do have any sort of trauma because i think that's the hardest step yeah. for most people we don't realize we have trauma yeah. or certain triggers we just know that we don't like certain things and yeah. I think once we recognize or we're more self-aware that we can use technologies like this to our advantage yeah. that's the first step though the acknowledgement yeah of fear. Thank you, clowns, guys. Yeah. Admit it. <laughs> TV. Thank you, Masali. Thank you, Masali. Thank you, Masali. Good luck with uh, with this. We're looking forward to hearing yeah. more Thank you, about how this is going Very to happen. Very interesting. In the future. Thank you, Sam. Take care. Thank you. All right, uh, we're going to take another short break, but we have more recaps for you from our earlier segments when we return here on the Sea Morning Show. Stay with us. Why are you scared of clowns, though?